Show, episode reviews and discussion podcast. I am your host, Ruben Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Magic that turns you into a furry, the darkest of them all. Oh my. Also joining us today is Tatera. Well, see, now I can't be a furry because I'm a reptile Pokemon, so I'm, obviously I'm not covered in fur. There's a difference. Yeah, they have a name for you folks. They call you Skaggies. Is that even a thing? Yes, I think. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. So anyway, in today's episode, we are going to review My Little Witch Academia episode 6, season 1, uh, titled The Fountain of Polaris. Uh, po- Polar? Polaris? That's in the Japanese. Uh, the Netflix title will be just The Fountain and so on. Uh, in this episode, unable to master e- even basic transformation magic, Akko is relegated to her room and must miss the welcome party of a VIP and his handsome, handsome son. Mm. But before we carry on, Silver, first impressions are in order. What do you think? Well, it's actually been a little while since I saw this. I was on a roll with a Little Witch Academia. By the way, Norman, I'm sorry, but you get the booby prize for first first one to say My Little Witch Academia. <laughs> oh, boy. At the same time, that, that means that we're not wait, on pins and needles waiting to see who will crack first. <laughs> I'm just going to say it, man. Like, My Little Witch, then you got My Hero, and they're like, mm, My Little Hero. <laughs> Mm, who knew we fans were so possessive? <laughs> You're right. You know, Sorry, we got my hero academia, else. my little witch academia, my little pony. What's with all these mys? <laughs> my my. <laughs> then we, then we got my Valentine. Uh, uh, she's just some M E I. Uh, yeah, but you could be my Valentine. Uh, oh, Even though that boy. happened, Valentine's Day was two days ago at the time of this recording. Yeah, uh, true that. And when this get releases. <laughs> I don't know. Anywho, carry on. We're still in the month of love. I t- Anywho, go, carry on, Silver. Carry on. <laughs> carry on. Norman doesn't even know what to well, say. She's like, uh, carry on. It's just carry on, carry on. Yes, as you are. <laughs> what can I say? I, I enjoyed this because Akko is such a, a screw up and really strong willed, which often works against her. I mean, you think, oh, a strong-willed character. That means that they're really great at what they do. No, she's she doubles down on her screw-ups a lot. <laughs> but that's part of what adds charm, and you sort of root for her. Plus, you get a new... We get to see a new relationship form. Friendship, perhaps, but also maybe more. Mm-hmm. I ship it. <laughs> yes, yes, we, we must. We are on a bound. <laughs> but also, I love the message at the end. And the idea that you're that sometimes great witches and success start as ma- massive screw ups. Akko inherited the shining rod. Obey my rod again. But that doesn't mean everything's gonna go her way. And I think this is an important lesson for her to learn. So we will unfold more as we go along. All right. And Tara, what about you? I mean, so it just took the words right out of my mouth because I really like this episode too. It has a good lesson at the end. And I like how Akko, as clumsy as she is, still has a lot of faith in herself, and she never gives up. <laughs> yep, and you know what? You guys took the word right out of my mouth. Like, there's nothing more I could add into my impressions, because I recently watched this, and I really, really like it. And Akko here isn't boy crazy. She is shy around Alex, Adam, what was his name again? Uh, Andrew. Wow, what, what a, what a memorable character! If we can't even get his name down, <laughs> Donkey Boy. I, I, yeah, I usually remember his name because he has the same name as my cousin. <laughs> oh, lucky you! <laughs> so, anywho, Donkey Boy here. Yeah, so it is a fun episode. It is a fun episode. Anyway, uh, if you, uh, you know, I haven't mentioned this. This is a Patreon sponsored review. It's um, sponsored by. Jeffrey, thank you so much. And like I mentioned before, if you have not watched this episode yet, pause sure and go do so. Welcome back. And well, we start off the episode with, well, um, magic. We see the students trend practicing or performing 
a transmogrification spell that turns rats into whatever they can think of. Um, oh, this is Magic 101, so everybody got it right. And except for Arco. Arco got no idea what she's doing and she fails. Her teacher tells her that she can't join the party because she is a dunce. So she needs to practice the transmog transmogrification spell until she gets it right. So, well, if that, she misses the party and oh, boohoo. Or she's supposed to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in the next scene, uh, the headmistress tells the students to be on their best behavior because the rich boy and his father are coming to the school for a visit. And I am going to pause here. Silver, what do you think? Well, I always I always marvel at, at these transmogrifications. Like, you are basically changing the world to suit your desires. That's got to raise some ethical red flags. If it doesn't, I'm afraid of you. I always fall back on uh, the, the, let's see, it's the, it's the Tales from Earthsea series. What was it? What was it called? Sparrowhawk? Pardon me as I, as I double check. There's the anime Tales from Earthsea. Oh, okay. Darn, I'm going to have to. Uh, Would again. you like to pass the torch Is... to Terra for a bit while you search for your yes. thing? All yes, right. let's pass the torch to Terra while I, uh, while I look this up. All right, Terra? Hey, well, on one hand, I kind of, I like how, you know, they show off the spells that they can change a uh, small mouse to anything. Uh, I think they did on other witch type wizard mo movies too. But on the other hand, if that goes in the wrong hands, that'd be terrible. I mean, like, imagine if Pinky had that kind of power. She would transform everyone to cupcakes and eat us all. <laughs> But you do remember that, sorry, I never do remember, uh, what's worrying more is that this is a basic transformation. So it's basic. So may, so that means a level one witch would have know how to change a rat into whatever. So that is troublesome. So what would that make Akko then, a level zero? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, she has no talent. Which is no, kind no of... talent whatsoever. But she never gives up. Yep. But it also is, uh, it's you know. Then you, later on, you get those kinds of girls. It's like, oh, he's it's a handsome guy's gonna come. Oh, you can't wait to see him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sweetie, boat may need to censor me on this, but oh, the the girls are like, oh, handsome boy coming. That's not a word. Oh my God, oh my. Norman. <laughs> <laughs> Silver, you got it. I, uh, well, I've got many things first. <laughs> I also have, yes, uh, Tales, A Wizard of Earthsea, which honestly was such a simple title. I'm a little embarrassed that I didn't know it right away. Uh, Ursula K. Le Guin. She wrote this wonderful series, and in it they make the point that, to, that you can't go around changing the world without unintended consequences. To light a candle is to cast a shadow. So here are these girls basically changing something from the way it's supposed to be, what it was born as, and, well, you know, how it exists in this world, and just reshaping it from a mouse to a horse in, in Diana's case. And just like, that seems like something you wouldn't do casually. And so I worry about the lack of ethics in this school. It's more like we have the power to do so, so, sh so we will. And... I guess I've always loved the idea of magical ethics to, <laughs> to question, you know, you have all this power, but that doesn't put you above consequence or cause and effect. True. And at the same time, too, we got no idea how this world works, really, because uh, in Harry Potter, there's ministers and ministry and whatnot to keep wizards in check. Over here, we got no idea and whatnot. Probably there's some kind of law that take cares of this i'm thinking probably but there's no season two so got no idea <laughs> you are hereby charged with trans transmogrification without a permit <laughs> how do you plead you're a newt i'm a what <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anywho i'm gonna carry on so as the assemble in the dining room or whatever it is the vip guest comes 
by and all of the girls are impressed with the guy the, the vip son what was it the name andrew was it yes yes andrew so yay all of the girls uh ooh and ah for andrew's arrival wow i'm forgetting the two friends name uh, who was it named suchi and uh what was her name again L- oh, L- uh, lote uh, lote and suzy yes yes, yes. <laughs> lote and suzy uh, they're at the banquet table eating and Ursula comes by and asks, where is Akko? They explain what we know and we get to see Akko in her room trying to change the rat into a rabbit. But it backfires and turns her into a furry. Oh no. So she gets inspired by one of her trading cards and said trading card reveals to her about the fountain of Polaris. And she go looks it up in a reference book and discovers that hey uh the whole thing is at the school and i could go over there and unlock my full potential Ooh, let's go do that while she's doing that in the dining hall we see we're just performing some dance by the fire nation oh no what is this avatar (laughs) probably so Andrew's friend, Mr. I got no idea who his name is, is talking about the witches here and how good they look. Andrew just says, yeah, I'm not interested in them at all. Especially that Diana person. Yeah. Andrew's dad talks to the headmistress saying that Andrew's a bit bored with the performance and wants to look around the school. And headmistress calls upon Diana to be his guide. So when she goes around showing the whole school to him Uh, it is discovered that diana and and andrew were friends and they have been well friends is a strong word acquaintances yes acquaintances from their childhood Uh, andrew's friend is shocked at the revelation and they walk around and i'm going to pause here so tara what do you think well First off, we we can see that now Aqua is a furry because she's got the bunny ears and she's even got that little rabbit nose, which is kind of adorable. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. But also we see that she's starting to have some doubt, wondering, you know, am I even worthy to become a witch, to be able to use the shiny rod? And then, you know, she, we see that she's been able to use it twice, once the, when she was falling and uh, the second time where the, the giant tree was getting out of control. But then after she's like, oh, another card. And like I said before, last time we did the Little Witch Academia review, it was also actually uh, referencing uh, testing one, two, three. That's it. Where Akko's learning in her own way. They show it again where it's like, wait a minute. I think I know a way. And then she reads the card. She pulls out a book. It's like, that's great that she's learning her own way. And then I can't really say much about Andrew and Diana because, yeah, they've been acquaintances. And then you got Andrew's cringy friend where he's like, hey, I want to go out with that girl. And then he's like, hey, nice to meet you. I've been a friend with Andrew's for a while. Oh, boy, that is cringe. Anywho, Silver, what do you think? Well, hey, man, there's only one magic in this world that can turn you into a furry. <laughs> and that is the Arakakamalos. <laughs> the Ara- <laughs> The Arakakawados? <laughs> the Arakakamaros, man! I don't know what that is! Don't you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth, man? No, I do not, man! <laughs> oh, man! You, you don't know the depths to which I have sunk because of the Arakakamaros and them foes! <laughs> they took my heart and went to your wife! <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> oh. Hey, man! I mean, what, what can I say? When talking about the Arakakama roast, no one can match me in my debating squibs. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> yep. I guess. Yep, yep. Oh, boy. Anywho. <laughs> Anywho, I just had to throw that in there <laughs> because it's just fun. Yeah, let's not explain it. No, let's, let's not even explain it. <laughs> or is it, is it a PG thing? Oh, it is PG. You're not going to explain it. 
as long as I don't have to talk about doing and taking my opponent's dick. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but, okay, so... What well, I agree, it's nice to see. It is kind of funny that Akko, who learns on her own way, is... They're trying to force her, but I gotta say, the teachers at Luna Nova really aren't that good. In fact, I'd argue they really stink as teachers. They're so ingrained in tradition that they have no idea if a student isn't working to their standards, they never think, well, maybe we need to shift our approach. No, they're too busy fawning over Diana. And it's it's like, after a while, you're like, oh, wow, this is just pitiful. Hogwarts had its problems, but I don't think they ever got this bad. Usually Hogwarts say if you can't perform, you'll get kicked out, so... Eh. Yeah, but Dumbledore was the kind of guy who never... He he would only kick you out if it was the last resort. You sure? The man understood... Yeah. Heck, well, perhaps he learned something from Lord Voldemort. Uh, I guess. He learned not to judge everything just by performance alone. As everyone loved him. But I'm getting on a Harry Potter tangent. Uh... Honestly, the other book I'm thinking of while I watch this is Mistborn, because there is the trope of the bored and aloof privileged young man meeting the, well, he hasn't yet met Akko, but you see this character in fiction, someone who's just bored with their status in life. And in some ways, I feel like he's the opposite of, of Diana. While she constantly has to perform and impress to live up to her namesake, Andrew seems to be drifting, almost coasting on his uh, on his family's name and reputation. So I can see why he and Diana don't really seem to get along. Really? I, I don't feel that way because the way I see it is that Andrew here ha is not really into the whole magic thing and says he's arcane and kind of not used in the modern world which is kind of kind of the theme for the the series because even the dragon there uh his thing says like huh. magic is kind of dead and technology is a new in thing yes as he checks his stock portfolio yeah okay <laughs> oh a dragon on wall street Ooh, there's a book title oh that would be cool <clears throat> but uh but i do get the sense that he's that even his frustration with magic is just him feeling adrift in life in general, in life, the universe and everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm used to seeing this character. It's not bad to, to recognize a, a trope, but at the same time, you just, you think, ah, what can you, what can you do to surprise me? Impress me. Well, witness me. Well, talking about surprises, uh, he noticed, something sneaking around and goes and check it out and it seems that it's Akko. Akko is sneaking around the campus trying to go to the north end of the campus to go to the shrine of something i don't remember so the pool of the fountain of polaris ah, yes so andrew here notices Akko and tries to pull on her ear. Um, Akko screams. And Andrew here just is curious. Are those real and whatnot? And why would you do that? Are you a furry? Akko denies it and says that it's a spell. It backfired, blah, blah, blah. And Akko here just being Akko, which is cute and adorable. And... Man, don't make fun of the furries. <laughs> do, do not mock the power of the Orkakamos. <laughs> Hey. I don't even know what that means. It's okay, Tara. It's okay. So, anywho, Andrew here disses on magic and Akko, you know, being Akko doesn't like it and tries to defend it. Andrew here says, well, prove it to me. Like, do something cool or something. And Akko tries it and turns Andrew into a donkey. A donkey. With the donkey ears and tails. So... <laughs> uh, be before Diana and Andrew's friend comes along, they hide and, well, Akko drags Andrew along 
to go for to the fountain. Once they reach there, they found a plaque. Said plaque is a warning. Long story short, yo, there's a bear here. You better go away and don't disturb the bear. Okay, cool, cool. Aku just rams into it. <laughs> oh, it's a it's a grizzly face. I know. Uh, should I pause here for you guys to talk about this, or should I just carry on? There's not really much to say in my opinion. All right. I mean, I can I can make more puns than you can bear. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so, anywho, after the door smash, there's a bear. Yeah. Uh, they chase them around for a bit, and they escaped it. But somehow... Uh, said bear is a big dum dum and crashes into them while falling to their doom from the top of the what would you call this building structure? Honestly, at the at the screen I'm looking at, it it almost looks like an aqueduct. Yeah, but there's no water. Yes, so it's a it's a dry duct. <laughs> so anywho, uh, said bear crashes into them and they fall to their doom. But it seems that. A certain witch comes along and saves them. Akko wakes up and discovers the gate to the... What you want to call this now? Uh, the Fountain of Polaris? Yes, Fountain. Which is kind of... Well, whatever it is. So they walk through and discovers the fountain. And I'm going to pause here. Silver or Terra? I forgot. I guess Silver can go first. Yeah, yeah. Silver. Well... I kind of like that this is the, another trope of two characters forced into a situation by external means. They're not, they wouldn't interact under any other circumstance. And yet the Akko is this brazen uh, young upstart who, who comes from a different social class. And I think Andrew is intrigued, not necessarily in a romantic sense yet, but I will ship it. <laughs> but he is at least seeing someone who's shaking up his worldview. In fact, challenging his preconceptions on magic and its place in the world. Like many a young person, he figure, he thinks he's got life all figured out. And he's ready to take control. And here comes someone saying, nope, here's a factor of life you never saw, you never thought about, or never factored. A challenge to the lie he believes. So that's a lot of, that's fun to see. Now, why they have a bear on campus that could attack you ties into... What I usually see in uh, in fantasy stories, especially with education for young heirs to power, you live in a dangerous world. Your school is not going to coddle you. It is going to have dangerous things on campus so you learn how to handle them, how to react. And while that seems shocking by our perspective, as we're kind of, I fear that we've turned our schools into surrogate parents... Truth is that school's supposed to get you ready for the world, and I'm not averse to a little risk in that factor. All right, all right, all right. And Tara? Well, I kind of I kinda agree with Silver how he said, because we see that Andrew, he's just basically sitting around doing nothing, and he's basically doing the same shtick over and over again. At least now when he's hanging around Akko, he's like, wait, now I finally got some adventure in my life. Even though there was that one moment where they're hanging off the bridge and Akko starts, uh, uh, Akko starts pulling his pants down. He's like, <laughs> Akko's like, I'm not doing this on purpose. He's like, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I'm totally shipping it. Yeah. But uh, another thing too, I kind of hate how some shows or even movies do this. Uh, I don't know if it's basically spoiling it, but when they show um, the teacher Ursula talking to the bear, you know, it kind of shows a little something mm -hmm. that they're hinting at something. Not going to say it for the people that haven't seen it yet, but when you do see it, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> here's the thing. We, as audience, are not dumb. We can clearly tell that... <laughs> Maybe you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Like, don't tell me that you don't even know... <laughs> oh, boys. No, man. Like, it's, it's clearly telegraph. Like... You don't really need to pay that hard of an attention to get that Ursula is chariot. Yeah. Oh, oh you, you spoiled <laughs> it for everyone. Yeah, Norman, you what spoiled the heck? It for the Norman! I, okay. Norman! I'm just going to... 
they're laughing at your your blunder, but now they're just. No, 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 no. Because I'm gonna say this. My views are. I watch this when we are going to record this. So that means I'm watching the episode as it is. I got no preconception future or whatever it is. I'm just up to episode six now. So I'm here. And if I can already guess Ursula is Chariot, then eh, it's not that hard. It's not like Goku is blonde or something like that. Well, he does kind of go blonde. Saiyan? I'm a super saiyan. <laughs> uh, boys. But anywho, but anywho. Um, any more, Terra? Silva? Well, we yeah. haven't gotten to the actual fountain part yet, have we? Uh, we mm, are no, there. We, we are there. Uh, we are there before our co prays to it. So I'm guessing you guys have nothing more to say, so I'm just going to carry on. Ako looks at the fountain and prays to it to give her potential and strength. And somehow it shows her the past about Chariot and whatnot. And Chariot seems to did the same thing. It shows Ako that Chariot was a blunder when she was younger. And she studies hard and fulfills her potential by working hard. And with that hard work, a phoenix arises. Yay! So, once she's blinded by light, she is at the front of the door to the fountain, and said fountain is gone. So, she's puzzled by this, and Ursula just comes along and tells her what she needs to hear, where she just came too early, and the fountain doesn't really acknowledge her. And... With that, Ako knew that she was too early by coming here, but she just wanted it. And the lesson here is a good one. It's a really good one here, and it's surprising. Oh, by this, uh, uh, at the same time, uh, Andrew's there just looking. Yep. Yes, looking. <laughs> He's like, what the frick did I just watch? I know. <laughs> <clears throat> what is going on here, you people? Yep. And Ako just cries for a bit and kind of, well, just doing Ako stuff. Um, she hugs, what you call this, Ursula, and Ursula gives back her wand. And Ursula just tells Andrew that I'll be reversing the spell Ako made. And could you please not tell anybody about this at all? And... Andrew says, yeah, sure, I don't mind. Uh, this will be a secret between us. So I'm guessing the spells reverse and they go back. Um, Andrew's father tells that, yeah, it confirms that he's suspicious that magic is kind of arcane and dumb and it's not important. And Andrew says, why did you, if, if, if you knew this, why did you need to go to all the trouble of visiting them and whatnot. And his dad says, Political power! <laughs> and with that, episode ends. So, Silver, final thoughts? In a lot of anime, there's this temptation to have the character get by on just sheer willpower or emotion. Guts. The shonen uh, franchise or, or genre subgenre is especially uh, ripe with this. And while I don't want to dismiss passion, I do appreciate that the message of this episode is there are no shortcuts. There is, there's no substitute for hard work and just paying your dues. Akko basically has to, a bit like Rarity and what we talked about last week with Dragon Drop, she, she has to stop going after what she wants and accept what she needs. And what she needs is to recognize hard work and practice are the only way for her to succeed. Or at least the only way she's going to grow as a person. You take one shortcut, and then before you know it, that's all you're looking for. And I really like that Shining Chariot is her role model, even as it, she doesn't quite pick up on uh, er, on Ursula's relation to Shining Chariot. Because thanks, Norman. <laughs> thanks a lot. 
And so, yeah, I, I enjoy the, the message and the presentation of this. And while the, the fountain might not acknowledge her, it's also not just saying, well, nuts to you. It's giving her a little something. It's giving her some food for thought. Okay. Bye. Hmm. All right. All right. And Tara? I really like this episode. Like I said, I like how Akko, she, she goes into the fountain thinking, you know, this will help me become a witch right away. But instead, the fountain shows her that, hey, not everyone's perfect. You look up to this girl, Shining Chariot. She used to be in your shoes. She used to be uh, a goof too and always mess up. But then later on, she studied hard and stayed in the school and never gave up. And then later on, she became a full-on witch. And that shows Akko. And then after, Akko's like, yeah, I figured that out. And now i got to keep working hard. And it's like, oh, that's so heartwarming. Yeah, yeah. That is, that is true. Uh, and as for me, I like this episode. And the lesson here is, I won't say it's deep and whatnot. It's just that if you really enjoy something, just work at it and keep keep <laughs> work hard and keep at it because one day you'll be great. That's the lesson I got out of it. But at the same time, too, uh, Akko's enthusiasm is really infectious and. I really, really want to watch the next episode and see what happens after this because I'm curious, like, what's going to happen because uh, all in all, we, we got to see a quote-unquote uh, relationship between Donkey Boy and Rabbit Girl here. So I would like to see where this goes. Probably it goes nowhere, but it'll be interesting to see. Uh, boys, but that's me. So anyway, uh, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, man, it's time to go back to the pony. And we're going to talk about the pony, which is not a pony, which was made by the Arakakamawas. <laughs> and we're we going to talk about a whole shoe way, man. We're going to talk about head of school, man. Oh, boy. <laughs> yep. So, oh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so next week, we are going to review episode 20, season 9, yeah. Uh, horse shooting. So that'll be for the look. Written by, written by the area chef of <laughs> uh, It'll be a lot of fun. A little bit of fun. Uh, uh, it, it's a starlight episode with Trixie. So it's, it will be a lot of fun. Whew. So anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can email them at TheMBShow@gmail.com. We we also have a Twitter. The Twitter is at TheMBShow, and my Twitter is at Norman Sanzo and Silver. Where can the good people find you? They can find me on uh, Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can find me on YouTube. Just do a search for After the Fact or Silver Quill, and I shall appear. You can also support After the Fact and myself by either going to Patreon for Silver Quill, or on searching for Silver Quill on Kofi. And you can find me on Equestria Daily on Wednesdays posting reviews and editorials. Hopefully without the speech impediment, because it's really cool, man. <laughs> uh, oh. Now, where can the people find the baby Totawa? <laughs> baby? Totawa are, are the baby Pokemon. It's not a baby Pokemon, good sir. Oh, no, the real baby needs his nap time. He got all cranky. Norman! <laughs> where can the people find you, man? <laughs> yeah, man. Well, well, the good people can easily find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortell1324, or they can just do a Google search, and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page. And earlier, Norman heard me do some angry typing, but that was me setting up my Kofi page, which now I have a Kofi page. Yay! Kofi! I have a Kofi page, but I never really use it. It's kind of dead in the water for me on Kofi, so I, 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 I just made my Kofi page so I don't, I don't know much about it right now <laughs> yeah you could always ask silver yeah baby the baby Totawa <laughs> coming to the silver square <laughs> for good for guidance <laughs> or in the wallage oh uh, yeah don't know okay. yeah I mean he, he, silver does come to me for guidance when he needs some pokedex entries <laughs> oh my god what anywho oh boy oh <clears throat> mm. 
Also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, Stitch Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on forneverlive.com. Links will be in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Amy, Tristan, and also myself. Like, thank you so much, guys. You are great. So, anyway, I have been Roman Sanzo. I am the Wars of Aquail, man. I am the one suffering on the Silver Quill. <laughs> and we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the Yes Show. See ya. Beware the fur is powered by the Oakaka of Wars. I don't know what that is. Oh my god, I never thought I'd hear that word again. Yes, the Orkakama Wolf, the seal is upon you as we do. <laughs> oh my god, someone help me, please.